Hi guys, welcome back to another Red Dog Top 5 rating video where today we are ranking the top 5 easiest factions to start in Rome Total War Remastered. So if you are a brand new player, if you are an inexperienced player, then please choose one of these factions to start with and we will even have a little bonus mention of a faction right at the start now how we're grading this is we're looking at how it would be for a brand new sort of inexperienced player i've had to kind of um, go back in time to think how i was right at the start of my journey in total war and how i thought the uh, the sort of difficulty of some of these factions were now one thing to note is that the roman factions are grouped in together uh it's not it doesn't take a genius to work out where they might be but of course they are all grouped in together i will do a little ranking of them though as well so first things first let's get going with our bonus mention just a quick note before we carry on going guys please do remember this is my own opinion this is not you know uh, scientific in any way it's just my opinion on what's easiest and what I think a new new game player sort of needs sort of wants on top of that we are rating them based on their starting game um, position on top of that the enemies they're gonna face and the unit roster they have to deal with that and that is why we have gone with these sort of top fives So guys, here we are with our bonus mention, and that is going to be Carthage. Now, the reason why it's not any higher is because, as you can see, its lands are reasonably spread out. And if you are a brand new player, keeping hold of some of these regions like Cordoba will be slightly difficult for you. However, the main consolidation of your territory is right here, and it's ready to go, ready to fight very quickly against the Romans. On top of that, little tip for you, let's get going and recruit this wait four turns recruit some elephants and you will have an easy easy game first things first guys if you are playing as these guys go and beat the romans because once you've beaten the romans there genuinely will be no one else to stand in your way this first army on top of that starts with elephants so you can use these guys to basically steamroll any of these armies little tip if you wait a turn syracuse will generally remove one of its uh, armies out of Syracuse so you can go and sweep in when it has a lot less troops or you can leave Quintus to go and siege them down and inevitably lose and then sweep in and take Masana. So why are these guys reasonably easy to play? They have a decent roster you know the Iberian infantry six morale isn't anything to sniff at it's fine it's the same as the Hestati eight melee attack ten defense decent starting unit same as the round shield cavalry it's okay it's not brilliant but you start with a minor city in carthage which is great a large town in uh, thapsus uh, boris is the guy uh, taking that and lily Byams also a large town these guys are less as less big um but if you want to get going with carthage straight away you build ports in everywhere that you can probably not in these towns but when they are the large towns you will have a thriving sea trade straight away and be making loads of money loads of cash loads of cash to buy elephants loads of cash to then steamroll the romans with elephants and have an easy game after that so that is why it's our bonus mention today So, coming in at number five, guys, we have Macedon, or Macedon, if you want to say it in the English way. And the reason we have Macedon is because their starting position is very, very, very good, I would say. Now, you will come to war with the Romans relatively early. You will be at war with the Greek city-states. But the only places you need to worry about is taking down Sparta, which, if you get your general outside of Corinth... Come on, speed up, bro. Um, and you recruit these hoplites and these guys. And maybe recruit a few more units in the vicinity. Taking down Sparta is not really too much of a challenge. You also get Athens nearby. You get Apollonia if you want to go for that. Or Salona. And Byzantium. Generally, Thrace will go for Byzantium, though. So you want to watch out for that. Now, the reason why Macedon is so high up... Um, is it in my top five is because you start with a large town a large town a minor city and a town you start with a very nice decent amount of um, population and sized cities on top of that look at this 
You start with some lovely Macedonian cavalry, which are fantastic, fantastic cavalry, and will steamroll nearly everyone that you come against, especially those disgusting Hastati that are going to start attacking you early game. Now, why they aren't higher, uh, why Greece isn't higher than them, because Greece starts out with more regions, I believe. The reason why Greece isn't higher up is because their regions are spread out and not consolidated. If you're an early game player, having consolidated regions is very, very beneficial to you. Having all your regions consolidated in one little area, and on top of it being one little area, it's the richest area in the game, guys. Greece is the richest, uh, most populous area in the game, early game. So taking these regions sets you up very, very nicely for fighting the Romans and destroying Rome. On top of that, you are right next to Rome, so you will come to war with them early, but if you use your units correctly, you will do some damage. On top of this, you can sort of get into the city barracks straight away and start getting phalanx pikemen. Would recommend, guys, because these guys are proper pikemen, unlike your levies, etc. And you start with a decent, decent roster. You know, it's not huge, but it's enough for you to go out and start steamrolling people as you're going along. Now, I do like Macedon. I think it's a great faction. Uh, and I believe it's pretty easy early game. Obviously, you're going to be coming up against the Greece, Greeks. But if you can go for um, Athens and Byzantium first, you'll have a very strong... Look at that. Look at that money rolling in. 2,100 already. And if you're an early game player, having all these regions as Greece spread out can be a little bit daunting when you're attacked from, you know, east, south, uh, west, Romans, you know, Macedonians, you know, uh, Seleucids and Pontics. You know, it's it's a, a bit daunting. Whereas Macedon, it's very easy to see where you are, to know what you need to do and where you need to go. So for that reason, I would say Macedon is one of the easiest factions in the game. And that's why it comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, guys. You might think this is a bit of a rogue choice, but trust me, it is true. The Scythians. Now, the Scythians start in this top northeastern corner of the map. And the thing with the Scythians is, when you're a early game player, what do you need? What do you need? You need time and space when you're an inexperienced player. And this is the, uh, the nation that gives you that in spades. Your nations are slightly spread apart, so getting troops from one side to the other is reasonably difficult. However, and you only start with three towns and a large town, but the thing that sets the Scythians apart from nearly everyone else is you can re you can recruit Scythian horse, horse archers just from a town. I believe that comes from your... Um, where does that come from? Yeah, your muster field, which is a town level building, guys. Which is just crazy. Because horse archers, in case you didn't know and you haven't seen my horse archer video on the channel. Horse archers are the most OP campaign unit. Uh, in the whole game, by far, in my opinion. So, recruiting your armies full of these guys is something you want to be doing straight away. On top of that, you have free reign to go after some rebel territories here and go after Chersiones uh, down here to Fraspa, maybe, if you want. Um, but yes, they are very OP. And on top of that, your building options are quite limited, which re reduces, you know, sort of the, uh, the gameplay element. However, if you're an early game player, not having that many buildings is actually easier for you to manage, easier for you to see, and easier for you to expand. Now, in terms of expansion, you only really have Thrace and Dacia to worry about down here. Armenia, maybe, but they'll be caught up with Parthia, and you can go and take Campus Sarkai at your leisure. Now, do worry, though, they do have some horse archers up there, so you want to fight with your horse archers, probably recruit a few more horse archers, depending on the... Um, start you are starting as but yes as i say this this nation is very easy early game because you've got time you've got space if anything happens you've got plenty of time to rectify it on top of that you are starting with the most op unit in the game that can be recruited just at town level guys so that is why the scythia scythii although they may seem like a road choice come in at number four So now we've got the rogue controversial choice out of the way. We're going to be going back to something that might be a little less controversial. And in number three, here comes the Bretons. Now, 
if there isn't a safer starting position than the Bretons in the game, uh, I do not know what there is. They start in the safest position possible, basically, uh, on the island themselves. Very unlikely to get invaded by anyone else, even if you're at war with them. Um, on top of that, you do start with London as a large town. Uh, Samaro uh, Breva is a town. Um, you don't start with the best roster to recruit out of them all, but you have powerful, powerful options when it comes to sacred circles. And you can get the head hurlers and um, woad warriors just with the first level of Andrasta. And the woad warriors are beasts, guys. They have no armor. But morale of 10 and melee, melee attack of 13. And they scare everyone else. So you will be destroying, destroying uh, Gallic and German troops for fun if you recruit these guys. Um, on top of that, you get the fantastic, fantastic chariots. Um, you don't get any cavalry apart from chariots, guys. So you've got to watch out for that. Um, but yes, you recruit them here from your armory. Uh, but yes, the chariots... Do serious, serious morale damage to your enemies. Especially when you are fighting either the Gauls or the Germans. So early game, the starting position, very nice. What you want to do is either ally with one of these guys and go ham at the other one. And you will be then the undisputed barbarian warlord in these regions. And then, you know, turn on your ally and destroy them in turn. Probably easier to go for Gaul first because they only have three regions down here. They're a bit more spread out and they'll be dealing with the Julii where the Germans, you know, have a bit more time. Go and soak up a few of these rebel territories. Um, but yes, it is a very, very easy starting position. On top of that, your roster's reasonably decent. Very much a morale shock roster. And you get the ridiculously OP um, barbarian warlord chariots morale they have a charge of seven and they have five hit points guys five hit points these guys can get killed five times and still come back so their total defense of two really is a total defense of 10 which when you think about it, it's a pretty decent defense but that melee attack of 14 and charge of seven absolutely ruins the enemies and if you run these guys through the center of a barbarian horde they will just make them all rout. They are so strong with morale damage. Like, so strong, guys. Um, so, that for that reason, Bretons come in at number three. Very easy faction to start with. Coming in at number two, guys. Probably the least controversial pick of the whole thing so far. It's Egypt. Now, this nation is incredibly, incredibly easy. Not only do you get the fantastic chariots that the Bretons get, you get these chariots that absolutely shred the morale of enemy troops. You get a good, decent unit roster early, early game, and you get probably the most advanced faction in the whole game at the start of the game. You start with six regions, of which you have a minor city, I believe three large towns, four large towns in fact, um, and a a uh, a town so you start with a very 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 strong early position and if you play it right these guys are going to be upgrading to huge cities before you've even know it and they produce serious money you can see 2500 at the start of the game easy easy that's without putting up any taxes changing anything and that's on very hard so you do start in a very very nice position on top of that, you've got all these soft, easy... Look at their garrisons. Terrible garrisons for these rebel rebel settlements. Almost no one. And you can take them very easily. If you want to fight Numidia, Numidia is one of the easiest enemies to fight in the game. Although, when you go this way, you've got to remember you'll be going for years slogging through this desert unless you use boats. Um, on top of that, in terms of your enemies, you really only have one to start with. And that is the Seleucids. Obviously, if Pontus comes down, you want to mess with them. But the Seleucids early game uh, are very, like generally die very, very quickly. They'll just be pumping out militia hoplites for fun, guys. And your chariots will, if they hit the militia hoplites in the back, run through them and rout them. They will probably even rout them if you just stand next to the militia hoplites and they have no general. That is how strong the morale shock 
of your chariot is. So you have a very, very easy faction to take down early game because they don't know how to recruit properly. The Seleucids, don't get me wrong, have one of the strongest rosters in the game late game. Or if you're playing them because you'll recruit the right units. But of course the AI doesn't know that recruiting a full stack of militia hoplites is basically um, a, a shortcut to routing a thousand troops and getting them all killed. So they will just be recruiting trash units and you will be able to sweep in. Take all this juicy territory, Antioch, Tarsus, Hatra, Seleucia if you're lucky. And take this lovely rebel territory out in the desert as well. And you will have a very large empire very early. Within 20 turns, you should have an empire of 10 to 15 regions very quickly, very easily, if you're nice and aggressive. On top of that, you get a great building roster early game. Some nice, um, nice temples that give you different bonuses depending on what you want. Get these all very different. Um... So yeah, you get a fantastic, fantastic start to the game. And it is incredibly, incredibly easy, even for early game players. And if you think about it, you're not even far away from Greece. So if you want to dip into the richest region in the world, all you do, get an army, hop on a ship, take uh, Kaidonia, take Sparta, get into Greece, and you'll be away. And this game will just become an absolute breeze. On top of that, as you can see, although you only have six regions, like the Greeks have six regions, but your regions are a lot more consolidated. These three regions here can pump out armies incredibly quickly because of how closely situated they are together. On top of that, they're re reasonably developed, so you can start pumping out armies of whatever troops you want as soon as you get the military buildings in place. And that is fantastic. Um, and of course, your general is very strong. So yes, these guys are very easy to play, guys. One of the easiest nations in the game. And I'm sure you can guess who's at number one. And of course, at number one, guys, we have the Romans. First things first, although they only start with two regions, they're relatively decent regions, no matter who you start with. Um, all large towns, ready to go, ready to get upgraded. Uh, on top of that, you start with probably the best early game uh, roster in the world. Um, Hastati are uh, okay. They're decent. 14 defense, 7 melee attack is a very decent early game unit. The only thing you want to watch out with these guys is that they do rout at the sound of enemy horsemen. Never mind when the enemy horsemen get into them. So you want to use your generals effectively to neutralize any enemy horsemen. On top of that, you will be fighting some decent Decent neighbours, um, and your regions are consolidated and very easy, ready to go. You get the nice Senate missions that give you huge rewards for doing them if you want to do them. Um, and of course, you are the Romans. So why would the Romans not be the best nation in this game? Now let's talk about which Roman faction is hardest to easiest. I generally say the Brutii are probably the hardest, just because you will be fighting Macedon and Greece simultaneously if you go into Greece, which is what you should do as the Brutii. But once you've overcome those guys, you will have the richest region in the game, under your thumb, under your rule, ready to pump out more armies, more armies for you to fight, more armies to go into Anatolia and Egypt, and you should be ready to roll after that. But yes, I'd say Brutii probably... Yeah, they're probably the hardest uh, just because of that. You will be fighting Macedon and Greece simultaneously. And Macedon does like to put together some big full stacks once you get into Greece to come and try and take you down. Luckily, as I said, the AI is dumb as hell and generally stacks them full of militia hoplites and uh, levy, levy hoplites, levy pikemen. So you shouldn't have too much trouble routing them if you kill their general. But as I say, might be quite hard to deal with if you're an early game um, inexperienced player. Now, second of all, we want to go with the Scipii. I love the Scipii, my favourite Roman faction, although the Julii are very close, and I notoriously hate the Brutii, the snooty Brutii. Um, but yeah, fuck the Brutii. But yeah, the Scipii come in at second, mainly because although your regions are separated, you get access to these two regions very, very early on. On top of that, Carthage is generally very easy to take down. Now, they have an army out here hidden in the trees that has elephants in, but if you recruit enough troops, if you send Gaius down, if you want to, with the two Hastati in Capua, you shouldn't have too much issue dealing with them. They even start you with archers 
in this army so that you can fire flaming missiles at the elephants and get them to run. So if those elephants run, you are in for an easy treat taking Lily Byam and Syracuse. Quick tip if you are the Skippy Eye guys and you can check my Skippy Eye campaign out in the description below. Um, you want to wait one turn before besieging Syracuse because the Greeks will always take, nearly without fail, some of their troops out. So you want to recruit your, the, the hoplite mercenaries, whatever mercenaries are available. Wait a turn here. Wait for them to take their troops out. They might even, if you're feeling lucky, put their troops where this diplomat is. And you can do a, a field battle rather than a siege battle to take the city. And then you'll be running. That is a minor city to take as well. So that's probably why they're a bit easier than the uh, Brutii. Because your first nation you take is a village, which isn't great. And then you're into large towns, really. Uh, until you start getting over towards Athens and Thessalonica. Uh, but of course, the easiest nation of them all is the Julii, because you are playing the Romans and you are fighting Levy Spearmen that Gaul loves to throw at you. They do have decent generals, so watch out for that. The Barbarian Warlord is a very decent general, as you can see. 13 melee attack, uh, 14 defense and 12 morale. Very decent. Uh, 7 charge as well, which is very high. But... You know, you basically have uh, pretty much the same, slightly less morale, but more defense and less charge. So you should just use your general to neutralize theirs. And then they're basically all the barbarian factions rout once their generals are dead with a tap by your cavalry. So fighting the barbarians is very easy, very easy for you guys. So that is why the Julii, of course, are at number one. Best unit roster, best building roster, easy enemies. Very nicely consolidated land. Ability to get a lot of money and troops through the Senate. So, of course, the Romans have to go at number one. So, guys, what do you think of my faction ranking for the top five easiest factions to play early game in Rome Total War Remastered? Tell me that I was an idiot putting Scythia in there. I don't care. I just want to hear your opinion. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do subscribe, like, check out my videos down in the description below. And that's it. It's all amazing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video.